Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to debug a SQL query which has a common mistake that many developers make. So let's get started. We have a very simple requirement in which we need to find out all the orders placed between 1st of June 2014 and 5th of June 2014. We have the simple data as you can see and we have 11 records that fall between these states. So in the output we are expecting these 11 records. Now let's get started with writing our query. So we are going to start with a select query and then add a filter on the order date column. And since we need all the records between the 1st of June and the 5th of June, we're going to make use of the between clause and then put those two dates. So 2014-06-01 and 2014-06-05. Now even while writing these date values, many developers will make a mistake of writing them in an incorrect date format. Many different parts, many different countries have different date formats, but whenever we write a query in the database, we have to be mindful of writing it in the correct format. So in this, the format is yyyy-mm-dd, and then it will be correctly interpreted by the database system. So now I'm just simply going to execute this query and see how many records I get in the output. So now I observe that the records that I've got in the output are nine records, whereas I expected 11 records. So I'm missing two records here. So something is wrong with this query. So the first thought that might come to the mind is that maybe the between clause did not include these start and end values while calculating the records. But if I look at the data, I do see that 1st of June as well as 5th of June has been included in the output. So these two dates are are inclusive which means the between clause has included these two values as well as all the date values between these two date values. So there might be something else that is missing. Now if you're really analyzing in a real world scenario you can ideally go back to your expected data, make a comparison, find out the missing records, analyze them and try to see why they might be missing. But in our example, I'm going to try to write another query to try to fix this issue. So I'm just going to copy this and in the next query, instead of using between, I'm going to use greater than equal to and less than equal to operators. I'm going to execute the same query again. And again, if you observe that we have the exact same output as we had from the between query. So we have these nine records in the output. Now at this point of time, if you think that you know why those two records are missing, then put them down in the comments below and we'll see if you're right. Now I'm going back to the approach that I just suggested and I'm going to look at my expected data set, find out what are the two records which are missing and try to analyze them. So here is my expected output. If I take a closer look and compare the two output, I will find out that these two records are missing in the result of my SQL query. Now if I take a closer look at the data, I would observe that these two records have a time part to them whereas the other records are all the time is 0, 0 in all the other records. So this time part has played some value. So this is a timestamp value, whereas the comparisons that I'm making in my SQL queries are just based on dates. So I'm going to add the time part. So to add the time part, I'm just going to, let's say, let's take the first value and just copy it here to include the time part as well. Similarly, for the fifth, I'm just going to replace it with fifth and then run my query. So if you just execute the query like this, including the time part as 00, you're going to get the same results because obviously the last two records have a time that is greater than zero. So these two records will not be included. So now to make sure that all the records are included, till the midnight of 15 of, of 5th of June. So I'm going to write 23, 59, 59, so on. So the last possible time value for a timestamp field could be in this form, which is going to be 23, 59, 59, 9, 9, 9. So this is the value that should be the last timestamp value possible for 5th of June. 
So again, I'm going to execute this query. And now this time I'm expecting the 11 records in the output. Again, do you think we'll get the 11 records in the output? And this is the right query. If you know that why this is not the right query or is the right query, put your comments down in the comment section. Okay, so let's execute this query. And now I've executed this query. And to my surprise, I have 40 records in the output. So again, I'm going to take a look at the result that I've got. I see records from 1st. I'm trying to find those records from 5th of June and I see them over here. I'm going to scroll down and now I see that there's some records which have a date value of 6th of June which have been included as well. And now we were not expecting these records. Why this has happened is because of a common mistake that many programmers make and fail to notice that the timestamp values get rounded up in a database so this timestamp value got rounded up to 6th of june and that's why the 6th of june records are included in the output so this query is not going to work we'll have to fix this query so now if you just decrease this value to 998 or 997 we are going to get those 11 records in the output and the last records are going to be the ones with the timestamp value for 5th of June. But this is not the nicest way of writing a SQL query because you don't want to be this precise with your timestamp value. So we move on to the next easiest way of writing the query and that is the best way of writing a query when dealing with date values and filtering on date values. So what we're going to do is we are going to totally remove this time portion from both the dates and we're going to leave it as greater than or equal to 1st of June. But here in order date, we're going to remove the equal to. We're just going to keep it less than. And just we're going to provide the date. The next date, instead of just putting it at the margin date of 5th of June, we're going to provide the next day, which is going to be 6th of June. And now if we execute this query, we're going to get those 11 records, which we always needed in the output. So this is the best way of writing a query when you're filtering on date values, which also have a timestamp part included in them, or even if you're just filtering on the date values, less than the next day's date is the right way of writing your SQL queries. I hope that you liked this video and it was helpful. We are going to be debugging some more SQL queries in our next videos with common mistakes that are made by uh, developers because we fail to notice these mistakes while we are writing the queries, but then they result in serious and big data issues. So stay tuned for the next videos and please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.